Hi everyone, welcome back to the Getabreed channel. So today we're going to talk about yeast substitutions. We've got some info over on the Getabreed website on the blog, which you can read about how to substitute from one brand to another easily. And we've got some tips and tricks and explanation on how to do that. If you're unfamiliar with yeast, yeast is what takes the sugars in, in your brew and turns it into alcohol. So the, the yeast chews up the sugars and usually creates CO2 as a byproduct of that. So there's um, natural yeast in the air, there's wild yeasts, there's yeast that you get in packets. And um, there's also on the Getter Brewed website a range of different brands, both in dried and liquid format. So I suppose the difference between uh, dried yeast and liquid yeast has changed a lot and the opinions have changed a lot in that in recent times. So it'll be interesting to hear what's your, what's your favourite and, and why, if you could stick that in the comments below. Dried yeast uh, packets have more cells, liquid yeast packets I suppose um, they have a reduced shelf life and there's perhaps, you know, uh, some would argue that you get more flavour through it and um, everybody has their own little differences of opinion. So generally the way we would look at things is um, ale yeasts are top fermenting, lager yeasts are bottom fermenting. Dried yeast come from multiple different sources and liquid yeast come from, from two sources on our Getter Brewed website from White Labs and White Yeast. The choices that are available allow you to brew any classic beer style and nowadays there's some really innovative yeast strains out there as well. So you can ferment lagers at ale temperatures, you can use uh, Quebec or quick yeast, whatever way you want to pronounce that, to uh, ferment at really high temperatures to get that real fast fermentation and clean neutral profile as well. But what I'm focusing on today is um, substitution. So let's look at an example here. So we've got these three yeasts here as an example. So we have uh, Fermentus SO4, Lalam and Nottingham and AB Bruin AY3. So these are dried yeasts. They're all really, really similar. In my opinion, can be substituted across the brands for the exact same results. It's the same with um, Fermentus USO5, Lalam and Brian 97, even White Lab 001 and Y Yeast 1056. In my opinion, again, they can be substituted with almost, you know, an undetectable difference between the different strains. So the reason for this video tell you a little bit about yeast uh, direct you to our blog so you can read uh, the suitable substitution table and you make decisions for yourself perhaps you prefer a certain brand for whatever reason perhaps you've tried to get that yeast and it's out of stock and you want to you know get something else that's available well then you've got the resource now where you can check that out Okay, so when it comes to choosing your yeast, you've got the resource now on the blog where you can go and see the substitution, but there's also the product description on the Get A Brood website. When we're describing yeast, we look at the flavor profile, attenuation, flocculation, alcohol tolerance. These are all considerations that you'll want to take into account whenever you're designing your beer recipe. So attenuation is just the percentage of sugars that are consumed by the yeast to, to make alcohol, um, the ABV. Uh, flocculation is where during active fermentation it describes the way the yeast cells clump together and flocculate, just fall out of suspension. And alcohol tolerance is just the, the level at which the ABV can go to, that the yeast is happy, the environment for which it can comfortably continue to live. And if the, if the beer goes above that tolerance, then obviously the yeast dies. So there's lots of factors that you need to be aware of whenever you're selecting a yeast. Um, perhaps you prefer liquid yeast for certain reasons or dried yeast. One big difference for me is the shelf life. Um, so you can get a dried yeast and it can last for a few years and you can keep it in the fridge and it's protected. Uh, you get a liquid yeast, you've got a few months on it. So that's the difference between dried and liquid in my opinion. I think it used to be that there was more variety available in liquid yeast than there is now. Um, and I think in today's market with all the different brands that are there, there's lots of variables available in both liquid and dry yeast. So check it out in the blog, let us know what your preference is, let us know what brands that you prefer. Um, we try to carry a, a wide variety of brands, albeit that you can jump from one to the other and try them out and substitute them. We just want to give you a resource where you you have our recommendations to do that. So look, thanks so much for watching. Please consider hitting the like button, give us a subscribe and follow our journey as we release new videos. And until next time, happy brewing.